Hello friends! Today we're gonna be doing a reading wrap up. So we're gonna talk about all of the manga that I read in the month of March. And before we do that, if you could go ahead and give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, that sort of thing, that would really help me out. I would appreciate it a lot. I'm on time this time, mostly. Um, so we're gonna talk about everything that I read in March and I did not count all of these, so hold on. 17 volumes of manga in the month of March. I read a lot at one time, like on one of my weekends, I just read nothing but manga the whole weekend. And then I kind of stopped in the second half of the month. I didn't read a lot. Uh, so, you know, whatever. <laughs> There's a good mix of stuff in here. So first off, I reread uh, Kageki Shoujo, The Curtain Rises. I read this for the Shoujo Sunshine podcast. I really, really like Kageki Shoujo and I wanted to talk about uh, about it on the podcast because I feel like it is under loved, underrated um, in the shoujo manga community, especially because there is an anime for this. Now I am bad because I have not read, uh, watched the anime, but I really like the manga and I feel like a lot of people need to talk about this more, um, especially like people who are like theater kids, uh, they would really, really uh, enjoy this. Also, uh, the main character Sarasa is like a big anime fan. So there's a lot of anime references in here. So that's another thing that like manga lovers can connect with. But I loved this. This is kind of like the prequel to like the main series, but it's the start of the story. It basically goes through Sarasa going, um, getting into this theater school uh, for a all-female theater troupe and the kind of like things that they go through. Uh, her becoming friends with her roommate Aichan who is completely different from her. Yeah, it's very good. There's a little bit of trauma in here but it is uh, so much fun. Really, really love Kageki Shoujo and I need to catch up on the rest of it. Next up, I read um, volumes one and two of Mixed Vegetables. This is by Ayumi Komura. This series, I have the whole series of this and it's an older shoujo. I found it in a secondhand store for super, super cheap, um, like $3 a volume, something like that. So there's only eight volumes. I picked up the whole thing and it's been sitting on my shelf for a while and I finally picked it up. So this is about a girl who is uh, the daughter of a baker and a boy who is the son of a sushi chef. Basically, the two of them have inverse dreams. So she wants to become a sushi chef and he wants to become a baker. Hanayu, she um, basically she makes it her goal to marry the son of a uh, sushi chef so that she can like take over and um, he has the same goal. Hayato um, basically has the same goal in mind. So it seems like it would be like a cute like uh, food related um, manga but it's like not great. <sighs> First off, um, the art is not super good. Like the covers are okay. And I just chalked it up to being like, you know, it's an older shoujo manga, but um, just like the rest of the, like the art inside, it's just like not, it's not, it's not very good. It's not very appealing. There's nothing special about it. Um, a bunch of it looks weird. So, there's that. And then the story is just like really annoying. I feel like I've just been like dumped in the middle of stuff. I should have more of the scene coming and it's just, I don't know. I'm conflicted. If you've read this, uh, let me know if you like it at all and if I should continue with the rest of it or just give up. I rarely give up on series, but this just like, I did not enjoy this. Most of volume two I skimmed because the characters kept on flip-flopping and they were angry for reasons I couldn't understand. Uh, so it's just like not super good and I feel bad for spending money on the whole thing. Uh, even if it's only $8 and even though I only spent $3 about on each volume. It just wasn't very enjoyable. Uh, so let me know if you have read this and if you enjoyed it uh, because I don't know if I should continue. Next up, I read volumes one through five of Saint Seiya, Saint Tia Show. This is actually a uh, seinen manga and it is a spin off of the very famous uh, Saint Seiya manga. And Saint Seiya is basically like there are uh, warriors of like the zodiac sort of like kind of Sailor Moon but men. Very basic um, I guess understanding of what Saint Seiya is but this is a spin-off of it so it's about an all-female team of um, these saints who fight um, evil and protect the goddess Athena. And so uh, the Saint Tia are like 
Athena's like personal guard. And so this series runs parallel to the main Saint Seiya series, but I feel like um, if you haven't seen Saint Seiya, then you would um, still enjoy this if you like that sort of thing. Um, I have not read or watched any Saint Seiya. I just know about it because I used to have a friend who was like really into it. Um, so I knew like what it was and the general gist of it. I also did a little bit of research for this, but I understood it pretty fine. Um, the characters are really good. The first few volumes feel kind of like Sailor Moon a little bit you know we're gathering this team of like celestial uh female warriors had to fight uh evil but um then it kind of deviates from that a little bit and um goes into um some background of I guess what is happening in the main Saint Seiya series you see uh characters from the main series like I think the main character from Saint Seiya shows up in here at some point it's still really good um I feel like if you want like a seinen sailor moon this is probably pretty good it's definitely not doesn't like hold a candle to sailor moon at all because that's all about like female friendships and uh love and stuff like that and there's not as much of that in here but it feels like a very like seinen take on it i guess the characters are really good i like uh their outfits <laughs> um and the kind of like politics that are going on in this um are pretty interesting. So I'm probably going to continue with this series. It's pretty long. Um, I think there's at least like 14, 13 or 14 volumes out now. Yeah, I still really liked it. The art is really good. Like it's pretty, it's really, it's really pretty. So it has that going for it. It doesn't entirely focus on all of the female characters, which is a little bit sad. I want a little bit more of them, but it is the first five volumes. Um, so we will, um, I guess see where the rest of it goes. I read volumes one through three of Yakuza Lover. So this is very popular. I'm not going to show the covers of this because, um, well, the first one is okay. The rest of them, especially volume three, probably not good to show on video. I don't want to get, um, I was going to say I didn't want to get me demonetized, but that hasn't happened yet. That's my fault. <laughs> I need to work harder. This is very, uh, famous within the shoujo and jose manga circles you know it is a girl who is i guess fresh out of high school she's like 18 um she ends up meeting this yakuza boss and uh they become get into a relationship there's a lot of sexy times in this and that's pretty much all of it like they go on a trip and they go out for one day and then the rest of the week they are just in bed <laughs> i think it's really fun. Uh, I know a lot of people have criticisms of it, like it's not spicy enough and there's not enough story and the romance is just like insta-lovey, that sort of thing, like they immediately fall in for each other. But I don't think the pr point of this is to be like something super deep. Like if you just want like fun, like sexy times where uh you can like live a little bit of a uh, fantasy you know that kind of like really dangerous guy who who could die at any moment and you want to enjoy some sort of story with that then this is uh, a good manga for this i really don't think this manga is intended to be that deep see it that way i just see it as a fun sexy time to read i think i'm going to continue with uh yakuza lover and um, get volume four. I hear volume four has a little bit more story going to it, so that is good. I really like this for kind of like the escapism sort of fantasy sort of romance story, so yeah. Then I read volume one of Imakoi. Imakoi is by Ayaku Hata. So this mangaka is the same as Wolf Girl and Black Prince, which a lot of people do not like. Um, I don't remember my I think I might have watched one episode of it and did not enjoy it. Um, fun fact though, uh, when I was looking up some information about this, the manga for this, one of like their kind of first like short mangas was the manga for the Johnny's Idol group cartoon, like way back in the day. So that sent me down a rabbit hole um, that I didn't know I needed this week. Anyway, Imakoi, uh, really, really good. I also talked about this on the Shoujo Sunshine podcast, so you can check that out when it's out. It's about a girl who like decides that she doesn't want to miss out on love because she didn't she regrets not telling her last crush that she liked him and so the next crush that she gets uh, she tells him right away and that happens 
very very quickly and so it's a really cute story of two high schoolers kind of like exploring a new relationship and kind of um, our main character Satomi she is like breaking out of her shell and she's being a little more assertive than she was in the past and she's doing some kind of crazy stuff like jumping onto the train platform from the stairs to tell this boy that she wants to go out to eat with him. So it's really cute in that way. I really like their relationship. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's full of like nice fluffy moments. Not 100% sure if I like the look of the main guy. He seems a little bit, I mean, this is probably intentional, but he seems a little bit like um, he might be like a delinquent, but he is definitely not. He's just kind of like a normal dude, but he has a rough exterior, which kind of uh, adds to the cuteness of the couple. Um, they do start like dating and liking each other like very quickly. Like the first volume, they um, get together, confess their feelings, kiss several times. So it moves very quickly, but it all feels very natural and it all feels like it's part of a high school relationship. So it's really, really fun that way. I'm excited to read more of this and I'm really glad that uh, Shoujo Beat brought us a really good shoujo high school romance title because you know I'm all about the high school romance title. Speaking of high school romance, we have the last five volumes of manga that I read this month and it is Volumes 1 through 5 of Daytime Shooting Star. So I told myself many, many years ago, I am not going to read Daytime Shooting Star because I do not want to read a manga about a student and her high school teacher getting together. It is not a thing that I uh, like or support. But I did hear that this series goes in the way of not that relationship. Uh, so five volumes in, um, it is still very much going that way. But uh, since then I have read more, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, the only reason I picked this up is because people told me that it doesn't, um, it moves away from that student teacher relationship. And so I gave them the benefit of the doubt and um, it does, it does go that way. So <laughs> trust me on that. Uh, even though I haven't finished, I have two volumes left, but those are uh, April reads. Other than that relationship, even though that's the main focus of this, this is really fun. Um, the art is super pretty. The characters are all really good. And it's really fun to hate this teacher that uh, apparently likes to fall in love with high school students. I think this manga really plays on the fantasies of high school students because I I feel like everyone had that one teacher, you know, that uh, they had a crush on. I don't know if I had any teachers that I was a crush on, but you know, there's always that one teacher in the school that like everyone has a crush on. And this, I think, really uh, plays into that sort of fantasy for high school students because this is for high school students. So I really think it kind of like gives high school students some of that wish fulfillment um, of like, what would it be like if I was like, if the teacher I had a crush on like liked me back. Um, I'm not saying that it's okay. It's definitely not okay. And any teacher that um, kind of encourages um, anything farther than just like a, a like a high school crush is uh, needs to go straight to jail. And um, this teacher needs to go straight to jail. Like call the police. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200 go to jail. Besides that kind of unfavorable relationship, I think it is really fun. There are a lot of really great characters in this and um, a lot of really great moments like friendship wise. So that's really fun. And then in the later volumes, it gets um, much better, much more of a more acceptable <laughs> romance. The art in this is like absolutely beautiful. So I am glad that I did um, start reading this um, even though I told myself I would never read it. I ended up doing it anyway. So that is my reads for the month of March. There's quite a few. I don't think I read any digital manga. If I did I'll talk about it later. I don't remember. Pretty good collection of manga that um, I read enjoyed everything except for mixed vegetables which kind of seems like it's just gonna be trash so yeah um let me know in the comments if you have read any of these manga or what you are currently reading I'd be interested to know also down in the description you can find links to things like uh, my right stuff affiliate link so if you want to take uh, get any of these manga go ahead click on that link make a purchase it really helps out my channel and me so there is a link to my um, 
wish list and um, a link to the Shoujo Sunshine podcast, everything like that in the description below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more manga content from me. That is all I've got for you guys today. I'm Chrissy Lou. Till next time, matane!